would, would roll up everything else and just say, uh, oil robbers. And so it, the city of Miami would just would, would bring people to the oil robbers meeting. Because everybody would seem to be going that way. Hallelujah. Amen. I told you that to tell you this. When the devil said, with the measure line, you're going to die of TB. Now, my daddy did die with tuberculosis. And I contracted the disease myself when I was just 11 years old. And again, see, the devil's tried to kill me so many times until that's why I was out and happy. I'm still here. <laughs> Doctors were lady, Dr. Weems, West Palm Beach, Florida, county doctor. Take over the calendar, run it up on the computer, do anything you want to. Dr. Weems was a county doctor of West Palm Beach in 1939. And they, they found out I had tuberculosis. They wanted to sign and send me to a sanatorium in Orlando. One of the only ones in Florida anywhere. And he stood me behind, he said, an x-ray, they didn't even have what they call x-ray, they called it fluoroscope. Turned it on and he saw the condition of my lungs and told him that we better get him some help and do it now. Because uh, if we don't, and in fact, in 1939, there's very little they could do for TB anyhow. They didn't have the technology. But so help me. My mama prayed on Saturday night after they discovered my problem. I learned a lot from my mama. <laughs> Lost her husband when I was only 11. Now, all of a sudden, I got TB and I'm going to die. But my mama prayed. She kept me awake till midnight praying, and then she got quiet. Came early the next morning and said, come on, son. Said, God spoke to me. Said, I know how you can get healed of that TB. <laughs> early on Sunday morning. Got me out of bed. We didn't have a car. We walked. But God spoke to her and said, take your son to Mother Collier. She had never heard the name Mother Collier. But God told her where she lived. She was a little African-American woman that fasted three days a week and had the gifts of the Spirit to heal the Spirit. She lived in a little shanty. Our house was not much better than that. But when Mama got me by the hand, she walked with me. Exactly where God said, across the railroad track on the right. Ha! The story's in my books. This little shanty. A sign on the door, in consecration. <laughs> Y'all better quit living so much like the world. Get this. How many of you took my advice when you hit the floor this morning? Did you speak in tongues? Come on, it's good advice. Try it sometime. You'll like it. The devil has it. He won't come anywhere near you. I promise you that. <clears throat> so, Mama knocked on the door and his kindly little old face showed. And first thing Mama said was, I understand you pray for the sick. She said, praise the Lord. Yes, I do. Come on in. She had one chair, a little army cot run along the wall, a two burner oil stove, a bag of Irish potatoes. I, I remember sitting behind there was uh, some print dress material because if you buy a hundred pounds of chicken feed, it came in a cloth that you could make into dresses. Y'all shake your head like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah you, you know what. <laughs> and I recognized all of them sitting there. Little wide eyed, you know, little, little blonde haired boy wondering what all was going on. Sitting in her only chair, mama standing behind me. And Mother Collier, let me show you something. It, it's, it, this is what you can have this. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. If I could ever convince you that it's not just for Mother Collier or see us up to go over old Robert William Brown or Jack, it's for you too. Yeah. You can have it. Yeah. 
She put one hand on my head. The other one she raised toward heaven. And here's the prayer she prayed. I can hear it in my ears today. She said, Dear Jesus. Now, she didn't have to say, Come by here, Lord. She didn't have to warm me up or warm the crowd. Oh, glory to God. Sometimes we come in here cold and we have to work a half hour to get you just ready to praise it. I can reach all of you. <laughs> when she said that, she said the doctors say this little boy is going to die of tuberculosis. But Jesus, you died to be back live. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and so help me, her voice dropped two or three octaves. And now, instead of a, a little African-American woman in the South in 1939, she became a soldier. Yeah. <laughs> so boy, I saw her. Voice dropped and she said, you foul devil of tuberculosis. Come out of there. In the name of Jesus. One day I'm going to stand in the judgment with what I tell you right now. But something hit me right up in the top of my little blonde head. Ran down the back of my neck, got into my lungs, and it was like warm oil massaging my lungs. Continued down my back, through my legs, and out the end of my toes. The anointing healing virtue. It was a healing virtue of Jesus. Sunday morning. Monday we had to go back and sign my life away to a sanatorium, see? Sanitarium. <laughs> Mom walked in, doctor said, You ready to sign those papers? He said, No, sir, I'm not. Now, the doctor thought he, he had a stubborn old lady on his hands. You give him one more x ray. Put him behind the fluoroscope one more time. If he's got what you said, I'll sign him. Nurses standing behind him. I knew one of the nurses was my hometown. He turned it on. He said, cough, son. I cough so light would go through my lungs. And he shut it off just that quick, took his glasses off, cleaned his glasses, and put them back on. <laughs> turned it back on again. <sighs> he turned to the nurses. He said, no. Don't you tell anybody what I'm about to say. <laughs> Don't you tell the AMA, the American Medical Association. Don't say a word to them. But I'm going to tell you, I got sense enough to know only God could have done this. I should myself. Only God. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God. Often say something. Let me put a caboose on this train. <laughs> the Shekinah glory of God can be around you, can be in you, can be a part of you. He'll change your thought pattern. You'll have to compete with the things that are in this world, but you don't have to be of the world. <laughs> You gotta live here because you're human, because you're flesh. We gotta pay our bills, we gotta do all that stuff. I know. But there's one thing about it. You can be in perfect peace when you get in the glory realm. I promise you on the authority of the word of God, you will never worry another day as long as you live if you'll do what I'm gonna tell you right now. Say, God, take me out of this realm and put me in the glory realm. Hallelujah. Let your Shekinah glory. Say it with me. Let your Shekinah glory. Say it, everybody. Let your Shekinah glory take me up. Put me on a different level. 
Never let me worry again. Let the Holy Ghost be around me. The devil can't penetrate the Shekinah glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Repeat this and I'm through preaching. Oh my Lord. For I, saith the Lord, for I, saith the Lord, will be under her, will be under her, a wall of fire, a wall of fire, round about, round about, and will be the glory, and will be the glory, in the midst of her, in the midst of her. If I got a secret and I can bless you with it, it won't be a secret anymore, you'll know it. Here's a secret. You got children that are out of the ark of safety, backslid away from God, the devil torment you. Let me talk to you, Mama. Let me talk to you, Daddy. <laughs> I was listening one night to television. And I heard a story about a man in California that had a daughter. This was a preacher. Backslid. Going out drinking and taking dope. And that, that dad had a place in his house where he prayed and he'd go in and pray all night. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Save my daughter, Lord, he cried. Call her by name. Save her, Lord. Save her. Six months. Every time they'd come up in the yard, his daughter would run out and meet those rough boys and look over in the car and he could see the booze and the, and the dope. And she was past 18. He couldn't do a thing except cry, go back, pray, and agonize. And, Tears on his pillow at night. This is a preacher now. He had seen many miracles. And God said to him, called him by his name. He said, I'm ashamed of you. Now wait a minute. God, you're ashamed of me? Why? Lord, all I've done is pray. All I've done is ask you to save my daughter. God, why are you ashamed of me? God said, I sent you out on the field. You see these miracles. All kinds, conceivable. And yet you're crying. God said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He was between the devil and the deep blue sea and he didn't know anything to do but go off out there and cry. Everybody on board, raise your hand. And God said, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forth. And God said to that preacher, I'm ashamed of you. Take your authority. To hallelujah. He said, I put the Holy Ghost in you. Saints, don't neglect the Holy Ghost. Don't neglect the Holy Ghost. Don't neglect the Holy Ghost. Don't quit speaking in tongues. Ha, it's your glory. It's your protector. He gave it to you for power. You will receive Acts 1 and 8. Power after the Holy Ghost has come up on you. Don't turn. She, she'll be your protector. She'll be a wall of fire around you. She will be the glory within you. <laughs> Somebody shout it. Next afternoon. It came the same boys. Same old hot rod they was driving. Same old booze. Dope. She looked like the world was the world. Ran out there. Don't worry about my daddy. I'll be all right. And when he saw that, his first inclination was to go back and pray and cry some more. And he remembered what God said. He listened to that car as it left and went around the first corner and he heard the tire squalling. And then the second corner, he could hear the tire squalling. And at that moment, he raised his hand and took his authority. 
He said, Devil, in the name of Jesus, turn my daughter loose. minutes or so this little figure come walking up the yard tears falling mixed up all with the mascara and everything going down her face she said daddy it's all right now she said on the second curve she said somebody had put up a gospel tent down there I took one look and I said stop this car <laughs> They thought something was wrong. She stopped it. She said, I got out of that car and I didn't stop it. I hit that altar. And she said, everything is all right now. My Lord, if I ever tried to help a bunch, I want to help you now. I want to take your authority. Don't neglect your authority. Your authority is the power, the unction, the Holy Ghost. Glory to God every day of your life. Make sure you got it. My advice to you every day of your life, speak in tongues. It's a wall. Where he would defeat you, he, if he sees out anointing, he's going to run the other way. Amen. <laughs> the devil's got sense enough not to mess with somebody that's got the anointing. Amen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Three people didn't get that. Sense in the mess with somebody that's anointed. He'll quit messing with you if you will get the Holy Ghost. Speak in tongues and let it be a wall of fire around you. My Lord, somebody jump up and say, I believe it, 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 I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Out of this, raise your right hand and say, I got it. 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 A wall of fire around you and the glory in the midst of you. <laughs> the power comes from the Holy Ghost. If you don't have it, see, do you get it? Mama, take your authority. Daddy, take your authority. Without the Holy Ghost, you don't have the authority. With the Holy Ghost, the, the early apostles, they, they knew them as men that set the world on fire. Yes. And the devil will start to recognize you. Every time he comes your way, he sees that anointing, he'll run the other way. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. In just a few minutes, we're going to have one of the most important services we've had since I've been here. How many remember me announcing the anointing? Hallelujah. The, the, the anointing services tonight. Thank you. I'm going to ask God to let you get so much to your family won't, won't even recognize you. Thank you. <laughs> My sister had a girl so so out of out of contact with God, backslid. My, and my sister did the same thing. Just start every time she'd come home, Claudia would hear her mama call her name. Oh God, say Claudia, God. That went on for about a year. And God spoke to her. He said, give her to me. Think about it. He said, give her to me. Let me handle it. Ah. Woo, some joy came over her. She started praising God. <clears throat> Claudia came in her usual way, late, drinking, running around, my own way. She said, Mommy, you're not praying. I said, you're not calling my name. She said, that's right. I said, I've turned you over to God. Amen. She said, so help me. It's exactly what she did. She said, no, Mommy, don't do that. Please, don't turn me over to God. Please don't turn me over to God, Mama. Don't, don't do that. She started crying and weeping and fell on her knees. 
go back with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This will be the last time I'll be with you in this building. Unless the Lord says be back next Easter. How many want me to come back Easter? How many will pray for your pastors here? Brother and Sister Johnson. How many will pray? Oh, God. I never saw a man so much Holy Ghost tenacity. He wouldn't have that if it were going to what I told you. Holy Ghost makes a difference. <laughs> wheelchair or no wheelchair, I'm going to preach it. The devil already knows. It's a little funny, but it, but it's, it bears a point. I'm going to box him until I don't have any fists left. I'm going to kick him until my feet are gone. I'm going to bite him until I don't have any teeth left, and then I'm going to gum him until I die. <laughs> Now he got a case with me. Hallelujah. Somebody said, don't, don't you realize you're 84? No, under the anointing, I'm about 16. I'm going to be the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Sit in the room this morning and everything, everything I do has to be of him or I can't do it. Every dollar that you gave in this revival is blessed because you gave it to the poor and the Bible said blessed is he that considers the poor the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble see that's another way you can put a wall around you <laughs> somebody say take that devil take that devil he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord I like loaning God money I get, man, I get a thousand percent interest back. And that's something, where are you going to beat that? <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> and I was figuring up every figure, and I hope my figures coincide with yours. But what I came up with is I need $700 to pay everything complete and have enough to go to the next meeting. <laughs> I won't have enough to pay the rest of the 20000 but I'll have enough to go to the next meeting and they're going to pay it. So I need $700. And guess what? The devil with his measured stick said you can't do it. Everybody laughed at the devil with me. Devil can't stand it. Amen. Amen. You sweep him every time. <laughs> That's a wall. See, you're supposed to be defeated. You're supposed to be sad. You're supposed to be worried. You're supposed to be frustrated. What are you doing laughing at me? He will go the other way. Yeah. Woo! That's resisting the devil. He'll see far. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, how shall I shall Glory to God. Is anybody here tonight say, Brother Upper Grove, I'm going to help you on that 700. I believe God will bless me if I give at least $100 to make it all rounded out tonight without any pull or, or, or hesitancy. Just, just obey God. I know God's blessing is on what you give. And you know it. Just lift your hand and say, I'm, I'm going to be a part of this. And I'll, I'll take an envelope for $100. Amen. And bless this ministry. What I love about it is this. I know God hears me when I pray. And when I call your name. <laughs> you know your giving is a wall around you. Amen. It's a protective wall. And some of you have given and you've given again. And God's going to love you for it and bless you for it. But in the name of Jesus, I'm leaving for about four people to take one for a hundred. The rest of it will come in real easy. How many will say, thank God for $700? Amen. Glory. Ha ha. The Bible said, Enoch walked by faith. 
not a bit better than it. I'm going to walk by faith. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for partnering. Thank you for these blessed people, Father. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you've got something out of this meeting, and I'm asking you now. Glory to God. Give me some people to take one of these for $100. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. If you'll do that, just raise your hand. More sort of count. I need at least three or four. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have you prayed about it? Come on. God bless you, honey. Even from across the room, God said to tell you because you were one of the first. Those that you've been praying for. Those whose name you've been calling in prayer. <laughs> God said He's going to deliver them because you're standing. You're turning them over to God right now. They're coming home with you. They're coming home. In the name of Jesus, your unsaved loved ones are coming home. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you for the sacrifice. Thank you, Father. I praise you. Hallelujah. Put your name in gold letters on it so I can call it in prayer tonight. You bring it in. Glory to God. Bless you, honey. Thank you, Father. Short of a You got blessed, didn't you? You got blessed tonight, didn't you, daughter? You saw the light. <laughs> Go turn them over to God, don't you? I'm going to turn them over to God up here. Let see that. Somebody else is taking this while I'm here. 100. Amen. Thank you, honey. God bless that sacrifice. New joy. New peace. New love. New ground. Higher level. Somebody praise you with me. Yeah, I'm not going to hold this up. 